So Golem's been making headlines again for the most Golem reason imaginable. You may recall that this game came out with a critical reception of 34% on Metacritic from 56 critic reviews. It's currently sitting at 1.2, an overwhelming dislike review score from 279 user ratings on Metacritic. On Open Critic, things don't fare any better, with top critic average being at 37% and only 4% of critics recommending it. Some reviewers had so much trouble playing this non-functional game that they straight up couldn't score the game because they couldn't finish it, making it essentially a 0 out of 10. And all this culminated in Golem becoming the worst reviewed game of the year, and I believe it still holds that record. On Steam, you'll find that things aren't faring any better, with a most negative review score of 36% from a measly 351 user reviews. The fact that this game was sold at full price, a $60 to $70 if you buy it on consoles price point, was just a complete insult. And the majority of players recognize this, which is why the all-time peak on Steam is only sitting at 758 players. And as of right now, we're looking at four players checking this game out for some reason with a 24-hour peak of seven players and yeah i mean one look at the game and you can see exactly why this game garnered the reception that it did i mean just look at it just look at it look at the kind of crap that people had to deal with to call this game pre-alpha stage would be an insult to pre-alpha builds is how bad this is i mean look at this stuff Tons of videos out there highlighting all the bugs and glitches. This game is straight up broken from top to bottom. Here's another video of the game struggling to function in just the most basic form. So yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? On Twitter even, plenty of people highlighting bugs like these where it's hilarious until you realize, you know, you spend $70 on this. You've got people highlighting how the pre-alpha build of the game looked significantly better than the final build. And the pre-alpha version of the game, by the way, did not look good. This looks like ass as it is. But then you look at how it turned out and you just can't fathom how it could turn out like this. It didn't take long before developers put out an apology JPEG, of which we've seen too many of. Plenty of people highlighting just how many of these we've seen just in the last couple months alone, and we've certainly seen far too many of these in the last couple of years. Now, what stood out about Golem's apology is that even the apology itself needed a patch. Even the apology had some bugs that they needed to sort out, as the title here is misspelled. Instead of the Lord of the Rings Golem, it reads right here, the Lord of Ring Golem. They talk here about how the development team has been working diligently to address the bugs and technical issues and are committed to providing patches that will allow you to enjoy the game to its fullest potential, and yet they can't even get the apology JPEG right. I mean, first of all, there's no fixing this game, just the state that it's in. No amount of patches will ever get this to a state where, where it's acceptable. But the fact that they couldn't even get the apology letter right here uh, doesn't inspire confidence that uh, there is enough competency here to redeem Golem in any way, shape, or form, which is why people were appalled when they learned that Daedalic Entertainment, the developers of Golem, were working on a second Lord of the Rings title, which was being funded by the German government who gave Daedalic a 2 million euros government grant. But all of that fell apart when publisher Daedalic decided to close down their development branch and essentially shut down all of their in-house projects. For those who haven't read Daedalic's full statement, here it is. They basically said that they've made the decision to close its development department with full focus now on our publishing business. As a result of this, 25 employees at Daedalic were affected, likely laid off. And on the company side of things, Daedalic confirmed that the budget for Lord of the Rings Golem was around 15 million euros, or around 15, almost 16 million dollars. And given that the game's commercial performance completely bombed, given that its sales were meager, they likely lost a couple million dollars in the process of creating this game and marketing it. They likely came nowhere close to breaking even at a budget of $16 million. Now, here's where a bad situation gets even more embarrassing. Remember that apology letter, that apology JPEG that I brought up? The one where they misspelled the Lord of the Rings Golem somehow? When this apology letter first came out, I honestly could not fathom how Daedalic could stoop so low as to not know how to write the title of their own game. Like, yes, it's a very small thing, but when a game launches so disastrously, 
every little thing gets scrutinized. And when you can't even spell the title of your own game correctly in an apology letter where you're trying to convey that you're going to try to take better care of your products and you can't even take good care of your own apology letter and make sure everything looks right, then what does that say about your capability to make it right to people, to make a good product, to try to redeem this uh, disastrous launch. Well, it turns out there might be a good reason for why this apology letter came out bugged. Turns out AI might have been involved in the creation of this apology letter. You can't make this up. This information comes from German outlet Game2, who released the following video where they talk about information they obtained about the development of Golem and the post-launch woes of Golem from several former Daedalic staff members who have spoken out for the first time about what went wrong with a critically panned license game. Since the video is in German, I'm going to consult Video Game Chronicles reporting of this video with an article whose headline reads, Chat GPT was used to write Golem Game Apology, it's claimed. And all of a sudden, the misspelling and erroneous writing of the game's title makes a whole lot more sense. German outlet Game2 spoke to two sources who claimed that the apology was written with the AI software chat GPT. And here is an even worse part and a scummy aspect of what one of the publishers, Nacon, might have pulled off. This game, Golem, was co-published by Daedalic and Nacon. It's also claimed that developer Daedalic had no knowledge of the apology or its content prior to publishing and that it was handled entirely by publisher Nacon. If this is true, then this entire apology letter is pure deception because it is written as if this came from Daedalic directly. At Daedalic, we understand that the game's success relies on the enjoyment and satisfaction of its players, yada, yada, yada. And optics are even worse when you consider that the apology letter commits to providing transparent communication. But from this apology letter potentially being written by AI to it deceiving people by making it seem like Daedalic messed up here when Daedalic may not have had any involvement or knowledge when it comes to this apology JPEG, the writing of it, the publishing of it, all this paints a picture of a publisher that has no idea what it's doing and who doesn't really give a fuck. The title's misspelling makes even more sense. Not only was this written by an AI that isn't perfect and is flawed, but beyond that, no developers had a hand in this apology letter. No developers had a chance to double check this and it explains why all this reads like every other apology letter, because what AI does is essentially learn from existing material and they make stuff off of that based on the prompts that a user might input into something like chat GPT. So yeah, this reads like the most generic apology letter ever. How lazy and uncaring and completely devoid of any passion do you have to be to let AI write your freaking apology letter how insincere do you have to be to stoop this low if you're gonna apologize the least you can do is mean it and if you have to use ai to write your apology letter that means you don't actually feel sorry you don't care about writing something genuine you just put out whatever statement needs to be put out there to do damage control just the most corporate bullshit we have seen i mean apology letters that are handwritten as it is, can feel very insincere because it feels like every word is so freaking handpicked to convey the exact message that is very corporate. But now to get AI involved to take care of this stuff, no human element involved in one of the most human things you can do, which is apologize. Just what a joke. And then beyond that, Video Games Chronicle reports on what developers like former Daedalic senior developer and technical director Paul uh, Schultz had to say about this whole situation, discussing some of the woes surrounding this development cycle, conveying information such as there were people working on the game that have been developers for 10, 15, 20 years, and they're good, but they can't do magic because they weren't given the funds. When you think about where the current budget of AAA games stand, 15 million euros or almost $60 million dollars, is really not much at all. It's pennies in the AAA development landscape. That's essentially indie level budget. And for a Lord of the Rings game to get that kind of budget, to get such a low funding, and then beyond that, the developers were apparently not given enough time to flesh out this game or just make it 
remotely functional. The article here reads, it was also claimed in the video that due to running out of time before the 2023 release, several characters and cutscenes that were meant to be animated were simply hidden from the player. For example, one scene that was supposed to see Golem eavesdrop on a conversation between two major characters was recorded, but never animated. So Daedalic had Golem simply look at a window and have the audio recording play, never having to show the characters that were speaking. The thing is, that's like the least of Golem's problems, the presentation of cutscenes, just basic gameplay functionalities, as you saw in the clips that I showcased, were just completely broken. To the point where, again, one of the reviewers for this game said, I just couldn't finish this game. I just couldn't review and score this game because the game was just that broken. Like, Golem feels like the pre-alpha stage of an alpha build, you know what I mean? Like, it, it just looks and plays that badly. Schultz continued, you can't just throw more money at something like that, hang on for another year, and then everything will be fine. That's unrealistic because the game underneath it doesn't support it. Basically saying that the foundation of this game was already broken because of just bad practices and bad management surrounding how this project was kickstarted. So, you know, there was just no saving this project. You'd essentially need to reboot the game and give it the proper budget and manpower and resources that it needed in order for it to realize its full potential. And that's why this bit of the apology rings hollow. Our development team has been working diligently to address the bugs and technical issues many of you experienced. We're committed to providing you with patches that will allow you to enjoy the game to its fullest potential. There is no fixing this game. The best version of what Golem is right now still won't be enough for this to be an acceptable game. Schultz also discussed one of the game systems that they just straight up could not finish. The argument system was never finished and a makeshift solution was added shortly before publication. Initially, the mechanic was supposed to replicate similar conversations in the film, which saw the camera change perspective to denote which part of Golem's personality was speaking, Golem or Smeagol. We did get a glimpse of what that system looked like in the pre-alpha state of the game in this screenshot, which again, still does not look great, but the final version somehow turned out far worse. The Video Games Chronicle article highlights that when the mechanic was first shown off in the preview phase, a similar presentation was used. However, when the game was eventually released, players simply picked from a few options of simple text, all while Golem's lifeless character model floated in the background. Again, this is what it was supposed to look like with dynamic camera shifts, depending on which side of uh, Golem's personality you were leaning towards. This is what ended up being shipped instead. Uh, I mean, even the font, I I'm just wondering how they can even just pick something that's slightly more personable than this basic, what is this, Arial or something? I don't know, just the most generic font possible. And just the most shovelware looking game from an IP as big as Lord of the Rings. It's crazy to think that an IP that is just so beloved and so recognized and has such huge potential for video game adaptations could be reduced to this. So yeah, if you wanted further insight into just how mismanaged the Lord of the Rings Golem was and how few fucks were given about the game's development and how the lack of care for even this apology JPEG highlights just how this game was doomed from the start, there you go. Just the story surrounding this apology letter alone is fascinating, but it also illustrates why the development of the game as a whole went so awry, if you ask me. If the publishers and heads can't even do the most basic due diligence to write a proper apology letter that isn't written by some frickin' algorithm, then of course they won't be able to do the proper due diligence to realize the full potential of what could have been a compelling game. The Lord of the Rings Golem, I think the concept behind it is really cool, but the execution coming from a company that can't even bother to write a sincere apology letter and not have AI handle it, I mean, it's hardly shocking that the results ended up the way they turned out. Or at the very least, that's one man's take. Uh, this is, I mean, Jesus, uh, one of the most pathetic uses of AI I've ever seen. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on all this and just the whole uh, history surrounding the Lord of the Rings Golem and uh, the lessons that can be learned from this. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.